Welcome to our next video on applications with vectors. So we're gonna be using what we know about vectors to solve some applied problems. One of the first things that we have to do in each problem is draw and label a diagram to represent the situation. So here we are asked to make a sketch. We have a force acting on a ship traveling at 23 knots at an angle of 17 degrees with the current. Okay, so let's say our current is here. Here's our ship. It is traveling 23 knots with a 17 degree angle from the current. And here's our current. There we go. Okay, now once we can draw diagrams for these, which we'll have to do on every single problem, we'll be asked to find some values based on the diagram. So could, we could be asked to find um, an angle, or we could be asked to find the horizontal and vertical components, um, and that type of thing. So here we have a baby duck is directly across the river from the rest of its little duck family. So let's say our river is going from here to here. Baby duck can swim at a speed of three miles per hour in still water. The current of the water that day is two miles per, per hour, okay? So let's say the current is two miles per hour going this way. So our baby duck is down here and he's trying to get across. If he swims straight across, that current's gonna push him off course. So he's gonna need to angle himself to make up for the current pushing him. So there's our picture. Baby duck swimming at three miles per hour, current's two miles per hour. Notice that the current is making a 90 degree angle. Okay, so if a duck swims directly across the river with no current, meaning if he starts here and goes straight across, that would be zero degrees. What angle does the baby duck need to veer off when he swims across so that the current will push him right to mama duck? So we need to find this angle right here. Now, because this is a right triangle, we can use our right triangle trigonometry. Across from that angle is the opposite side and the baby duck swimming is our hypotenuse. So since we have opposite and hypotenuse, we can use sine. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. We're trying to find the angle. So we need to use inverse trig functions or arc sine for this one. I'm gonna write it as the, oops, as the inverse. So I would do the inverse of sine on two thirds. And that is going to give us an angle. Oops. Hang on, sorry, I lost it. Oh, there it is, of 41.8 degrees. So if the baby duck just started swimming straight across, looking at mama duck the whole time, that current's gonna push him down the river and he won't land where he's supposed to be. But if he veers off at 41.8 degrees, as he's swimming, the current's gonna push him right where he needs to go. Okay, another example here, we have a military uh, training test. And in this test, the recruits have to pull rope uh, or pull tires <laughs> by a rope across a specific length of the field. So we have Brenda, our new recruit, and she is pulling the tires with a force of 20 newtons on a rope that makes an angle of 50 degrees with the ground. So let's say here's our ground. Um, our tires will be over here, okay? The tires are attached to a rope and she is pulling on that rope that makes a 50 degree angle with the ground. She's pulling with a force of 20 newtons. Okay, find the horizontal and vertical components of this force. So if we just kind of connect that there, make that a nice little right triangle, we are looking for the adjacent side, knowing the hypotenuse, and we're looking for the opposite side, knowing the hypotenuse. In our previous lesson, we also learned that we can find the horizontal and vertical components if we know the magnitude and the angle. 
So I'm going to skip right to that. My horizontal um, component would be the magnitude of 20 times the cosine of 50 degrees. And my vertical component is the magnitude of 20 times the sine of 50 degrees. Now in the notes, I actually have it worked out like a normal trig ratio. So you can see how we get here. Um, but let's call this X and let's call this Y. Um, but if we remember that the horizontal and vertical components are magnitude, magnitude times the cosine of the angle for horizontal and magnitude times the sine of the angle for vertical, you can save yourself a lot of time. So my horizontal component is going to be 12.9. And my vertical component is going to be 15.3. So I could take this magnitude with this angle and write this as a vector. Here's my horizontal component for the vector. And here's my vertical component for the vector. For a lot of our problems, you're going to have two or more forces acting on the same object. So I have one force pulling one way, one force pulling another way. To simplify the problem, it would be helpful if we found the resultant of those two forces. And the resultant, if you remember back to the ge geometric vectors lesson, the resultant is where we're adding the two vectors together using the triangle method or the parallelogram method. The algebraic way of finding those uh, resultants is to add the horizontal components together and the vertical components together. So we can take two different vectors and the resultant is just one vector, a little easier to work with. All right, so suppose we have a tag team of wrestlers pulling on the arms of an opponent at right angles. One member is pulling at, with 180 pounds of force due north and the other one is pulling with a 125 pound force due east. So we want to draw and label a diagram. So one of them is pulling due north, one of them is pulling due east. And the north one has got 180 pounds of force and the east one is 125 pounds. So here is our diagram. Um, notice because they're doing due north and due east, that is making a right angle there. Determine the magnitude of the resultant force exerted upon the opponent. So in order for us to find the resultant, we need to look at these as two vectors. So I'm going to call one of them force one and force two, just to make this a little easier to write out. Force one is just a horizontal component. There's no vertical component to that vector. Force two is all vertical. There is no horizontal component to that vector. So if I take the, or find the resultant, that means I'm gonna add these two vectors together. So 125 plus zero and zero plus 180. So there's my resultant. If I want to find the magnitude of this resultant, I can take the square root of the x value or horizontal component squared plus y value or vertical component squared. And my magnitude of the resultant is going to be 219.1 pounds of force. Okay, now the last part of the question says, determine the angle of the resultant force makes with the east-west axis. In other words, the x-axis. So let's draw a coordinate plane. There we go. And let's draw our resultant on there. And just so I don't have to scroll up and back, it's a little reminder of what the resultant was because I'm not trying to find the angle of the original vectors, I'm trying to find the angle that the resultant makes. So resultant was 125, 180. That means I have a horizontal component, 125, 
and a vertical component of 180. My resultant, let me change the color, is the red vector. So 125 horizontally, 180 vertically. This is the resultant. So I want to find the angle that the resultant makes with the east-west axis, aka the x-axis. So from that angle, I have opposite and adjacent. So I know tangent works with opposite and adjacent. And just like we did before, if we're looking for the angle in a trig equation, we're going to have to use inverse functions, or in this case, our tangent. I'm going to write it as the inverse function to make it a little less wordy. And when we calculate that, we get the angle of 55.2 degrees. So remember here, you're looking for the angle the resultant makes, not the original forces. So we have two forces. We write them as vectors. And you can also, if you prefer, you could write this using the I and J vectors, if that helps you. So we write the two vectors for those. Find the resultant by adding the two vectors together, find the magnitude of that resultant, and then look at the resultant as our vertical and horizontal components so that we can find the angle. Okay, so on the last one, one of the forces was all horizontal, one was all vertical. So on this one, um, it's definitely not the case. So I'm going to call the blue one force one and force two, just so I can label it a little easier. So to find a vector here, the horizontal and vertical components for this force, I'm going to use the magnitude times the cosine of the angle for the horizontal vector and the magnitude times the sine of the angle for the vertical component. So when I calculate those, oops, sorry, there we go. Um, I'll get 57.5 and 99.59, okay? Now, if we can do the same thing for the second force, it also has a magnitude of 115 but this time the angle created is 120 degrees. So be careful with the um, angles that you don't get the angles in the wrong place. So the second force here has a horizontal component of negative 57.5. Now, if you think about this, if we had the x-axis here, this one is going left. So should make sense that there's some symmetry going on here, but one's going left and one's going right. So the horizontal and vertical, or excuse me, horizontal components are um, opposite of each other. We calculate 115 sine 120, that is 99.59. So they have the same vertical component, the horizontal components are opposites. So now if I want the resultant, because I'm asked to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant, I'm gonna add these two together. 57.5 and negative 57.5 is zero. 99.59 and 99.59 added together give you 199.18. Oops. Okay. And now I need to find the magnitude of that. So for the magnitude, I take the x squared plus y squared. And you can calculate all that or recognize that 0 squared, 0, 199.18 squared, and then square root it. So it's going to give you 
0.18. And we are dealing with kilometers per hour for the magnitudes. All right, we also need the direction of this vector. Okay, so let's draw our coordinate plane. And we're doing, remember, you're doing the magnitude of the resultant. So my resultant had a zero horizontal, 199.18 vertical. That means that this thing is only going straight up. There we go, we can see it better. So what is the angle created there? It's only going straight up. That is 90 degrees. All right, so in physics, they have a whole bunch of different things that deal with vectors. One of them is being able to find the force, or excuse me, the work created from a force vector and a distance vector. So we will find the work by doing the inner product that's what that little dot means, the inner product of the force vector and the distance vector. So we might have to find the force vector, we might have to find the distance vector, and then we'll do the inner product, or you can call that the dot product. All right, so Justin's working for a package delivery system or service. Um, he's pushing a cart full of packages weighing 125 pounds up a ramp 10 feet, ooh, sorry, uh, 10 feet long and an incline of 20 degrees. Find the work done by gravity as the cart moves the length of the ramp. Okay, so let's start with a coordinate plane. Oops, hopefully yours isn't crooked like mine is. There we go. And we have a ramp. And the ramp it's got a 20 degree angle um, and the ramp is 10 feet long. So we know the magnitude of this, we're gonna call this one our distance vector. Now, where does the 125 pound package come in? Well, that is gonna start here and gravity is gonna be pushing it down the entire time. And since gravity is pushing it down the entire time, that has magnitude of negative 125. Now we're assuming that friction is not a factor here, so we don't have to worry about any extra forces. So gravity is our force, our ramp is our distance. So we need to find our force vector and our distance vector. So the force vector is just going straight down. It has no horizontal component and it is going down 125. And again, that is negative because gravity is pulling it down. The distance vector, we're gonna to have to calculate magnitude times the cosine of our angle and magnitude times the sine of our angle. So our distance vector, is going to be 9.4 and then 3.42. Now, if we want work, now we found our two vectors, we just need to do the inner product of the force vector and the distance vector. So remember from our previous lessons, our inner product or dot product is going to multiply the first components. So zero times 9.4, and it's gonna multiply the next set of components. Oops, so negative 125 times 3.42, and then add them together. So the product of our first components is gonna be zero, um, when we multiply the second components, we're going to get negative 427.5. And we're working with feet. And our force was measured in pounds. 
So this would make sense because gravity is going to be pulling down. So we're finding the work that gravity is doing. So hopefully that makes sense why that turned out as a negative because gravity is pulling down on that. All right, so if we have no motion, when we're dealing with several forces at work, um, we can create what's called equilibrium. Equilibrium forces have a resultant that is equal to zero. So meaning if I add the two forces together and they're zero, then we have equilibrium. So here we have a 33 Newton force at 90 degrees and a 44 Newton force at 60 degrees. They're exerted on the same object. What's the magnitude and direction of a third force that's gonna produce the equilibrium? Okay, so let's draw this out. There we go, here's our coordinate plane. All right, we have one force that is, oh, 90 degrees. Oh. All right, so one force is 90 degrees. That is 33 Newtons. Okay, we have another one that is 44 Newtons oh, at 60 degrees. Okay. So 44 Newtons, the angle on that one is 60. The angle for that one is 90. All right, so we have force one and force two. Let's calculate our two forces. So be careful here. Picture's a little messy. Make sure you are sticking with the magnitude and angle for that force. So 33 cosine 90. Oh, wait, hold on. This is vertical. What happens if I calculate 33 cosine 90? and 33 sine of 90. Well, I'm gonna get zero and 33. So if you're in doubt, you can go ahead and calculate that. But if you have a vertical or a horizontal force, you don't need to do that step. You can skip right to it. All right, for the second force though, that is not just vertical or just horizontal. So we do need to calculate that one. Um, that one has a magnitude of 44 with an angle of 60. Okay. So that force is going to be 22 and 38.11. All right, so both forces are acting on that same object. So let's combine those into a resultant just for the two forces that we have here. So my resultant would be 22 and 71, yeah. 71.11, okay? So that's these two forces acting together. That's the result of both of those forces happening. I need the magnitude and direction for a third force that's gonna cause equilibrium. So what vector could I add to my resultant to achieve equilibrium? Meaning the result would be zero. So I'm gonna call that force three, just to kind of keep them all straight. So if I have 22 and I wanna make that turn into zero, I can add negative 22. If I have 71.1 and I wanna make that component turn into zero, I can add negative 71.11. It's gonna be the opposite direction of that resultant. So here is the vector that would create equilibrium. I wanna find the magnitude of it. That's what the problem asked me to do. So finding that magnitude, put in x squared plus y squared and then square root it. 
So the magnitude of that resultant is going to be 74.44. And our forces are measured here in Newtons. Okay. Now we also need to find the direction of that third force. So when we go to graph this, we're just graphing the third force, not the resultant. The resultant helped us figure out what the force is that would create the equilibrium. Now we're trying to find the angle of that equilibrium force. So this would have negative 22 horizontal, negative 71 vertical. So I'm looking at the force that creates the equilibrium. Let me change that color as that one. So I need to find the angle that's here, but that angle is actually measured from like standard position from zero. So here is 22 and 71.11. I have opposite over adjacent. So the part of the angle that's here in my triangle, I can find using my trig functions, which that ends up being, take the inverse tangent of that, 72.8. But I'm 72.8 degrees past 180. I need to find the original angle. So I need to add that 180 on. And so the direction of the equilibrium vector would be 252.8 degrees. Remember that equilibrium is going to cause the resultant of the forces to be zero. And then we can look at the direction of the equilibrium force, not the result. So make sure you keep those two separate in your head. There are more examples in the notes as always. So please make sure you check those out and let us know if you have any other questions. Thanks.